exciting day. And we're building something special here in Tallahassee. Now, Jalen Ramsey has signed with Florida State just moments ago. Dalvin Cook makes a lot of good teams look bad. He's just talented. Jerry James is everything that you look for defense. Everybody knows Florida State can lose the best DBU. DBU? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm taking my talents to. There's definitely a lot more talk about Florida State amongst the top players I covered. FSU staff, man, they've been building and building and building, and I mean, it felt like a carnival was coming to town. Right there in Tallahassee. Four-star quarterback, Brock Glenn, flips his commitment. Lucas Simmons is a guy that everyone in the country essentially wanted. Like Samuel Singleton. Call me up tonight, let me know, hey, I'm committed to FSU. I think this might be the biggest win of Mike Norvell's tenure so far in Tallahassee. Keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. And you climb all damn night long. Yeah! the state right down the road in Tallahassee, Mike Norvell. Now they said they've become a great story. They'd be a team you would not want to play right now if we had a 12-team playoff. Tribe 23, are you ready? <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the National Signing Day Recap Show presented by Barano Heating and Air. I am your host for this jam-packed show, Bryant McFadden, but I think we're all friends, so you can call me BMAC. Everybody calls me BMAC, so Call me BMAC, but with that being said, there's a lot to be excited about. Number one, I'm happy to be in front of you guys highlighting some of these outstanding student athletes that we will be seeing in the near future. Number two, the future is extremely bright. Extremely bright. So if you're not fired up about what we're currently involved in and what we're about to embark in, you need to get out right now. <laughs> you need to get out right now because I can tell you this much, man, it's going to be some big things happening in Tallahassee, in any state we walk into. We plan on kicking down doors and taking everything that's in the house out. <laughs> so with that being said, man, there's a lot, like I said, to talk about in regards to this recruiting class and what better individual to talk things over with than the head man in charge and Coach Mike Novell. <laughs> Coach. I know around this time, of course, for you and your entire staff, your nerves, your blood pressure extremely high because you believe you might get some guys, you believe you might not get some guys, and who knows how everything unfolds. But for you, seeing how things have you know, processed throughout the day, where are you mentally in regards to the guys that have finally committed? No, I mean, it's such an exciting time. And, you know, I love signing day because signing day sparks, uh, you know, signifies the beginning for all of these young men and their journey now as Florida State Seminoles. And you know, all the work, the relationships that are built, you know, the, the investment in time, you know, all the work that they've done to, to get to this point. And today you get to sit back and uh, you just celebrate that. And, you know, I'm so grateful for our staff. I mean, the work that they've done, you know, the countless hours, you know, all the time on the road, uh, you know, for, for everybody in our recruiting department, it, it's, it's remarkable the experience and every every person that it takes to be able to present the opportunity that's that's here at Florida State for these young men it is it is really a special day and we were able to attract an incredible group of, of young men that I think are going to be just wonderful playmakers for this university, you know, not only for what they're going to do on the field, but who they are off the field, you know, and we've been able to, to address some real needs that we had, but, uh, you know, really just, uh, you know, the, the quality of individual was was special, and, and that's one of the things, that, you know, I know we talk about it, you know, each year, it's finding the, the, the biggest, strongest, fastest, best fit for Florida State, mm -hmm. and we got some dynamic playmakers coming, so uh, it was a celebration today, and just so excited for what the future holds. In regards to what you just said, when you talk about needs, right? What was the biggest need for this early signing day period? Well, you know, you sit there and you, you look at the, the receiver class, the young receivers that we were able to bring in. Last year, you know, we didn't, we didn't sign a high school receiver. You know, we, we were able to go get some, some great transfers that, that came in and made a wonderful impact on our team. But, you know, we wanted to go and, and, and find the best and the brightest. And I think we were able to do a remarkable job there. Uh, you, you look at the, the, the defensive backfield, the defensive line. Uh, you know, signed a couple linebackers that, that, I mean, are just wonderful playmakers. You know, really at all three levels defensively, guys that could run, that could attack. 
lacked the versatility in their skill set. We wanted that playmaking ability. That was the, 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 the ultimate trump card uh, for what we wanted. You look on the offensive side, you know, I talk about the receivers. When we, when we got you know, Sam Singleton at running back, a home run hitter, a guy that, with elite level speed that you know, can absolutely change the game uh, you know, anytime he touches the ball. You know, you look at the offensive line, you know, you know we got you know, our number one target coming into this year, uh, you know, there with Lucas Simmons, you know, six foot seven, you know, uh, you know unbelievable, you know, left tackle prospect that, uh, you know, just, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit for what he's going to be able to do. And then you're know, adding Andre Otto today, who's, you know, just going to, you know, a, a, a special potential of a young man that can really, you know, play a variety of positions across the board. And then bringing in a couple of, you know, we had three transfers uh, that we're able to bring in, you know, with, with the, uh, you know, the, the experience that we have that's going out the door, you know, being able to bring guys that have started, you know, so many games that, that you all have a specific plan and vision. So, you know, really across the board as a, as a football team, you know, we wanted that playmaking ability, but you really needed to address the room because, you know, as you see, I mean, we've, we've, we've got a great foundation built. We've, got, we've, we've been a really young football team over the last couple of years, but now we're starting to grow up. Mm -hmm. You see the, that in the way that we play. You see that in the way that they respond. And with a lot of guys that are coming back, you know, at, at critical positions, I mean, it, the, the, the young men that are coming in, I mean, they, they, this is an exciting time, and I think they're going to make an incredible impact. How important is the transfer, transfer portal, especially for Florida State, seeing the success you guys have had when you've been in the, in the portal getting some of these big-time names? Yeah, you know, you, you look at each at each position that you have and, you know, the, the, the different needs and, you know, let's take the tight end position. You know, we have some remarkable young talent there in, in that in that room. Mm -hmm. um, you're losing, you know, Cam, uh, you know, Cam McDonald and Wyatt Rector. You know, we have a, and a he couple. was a transfer also, right? Uh, well, a Cam, a Wyatt was, but yeah, Cam came yeah, in as a, yeah, as a yeah, uh, he had his career where he was able to grow and develop. Um, but with those guys going out, you know, we, with, with, you know, red shirts, with uh, red shirt freshmen and sophomores, you know, in, in that, in that group, we wanted to bring a little bit more experience. Mm -hmm. And so going out and being able to get, you know, two just special, you know, dynamic tight ends, you know, you, you got uh, Jaheim Bell who can really do everything. He can line up at almost every position. I think he was one of the most explosive players in college football last year. And then Kyle Morlock, who is, who is a 6'7", 250 pound, you know, tight end that can that also can line up all over the field. It, it, you know, the dynamic of what they, what they provide for us, um, you know, we didn't need to sign a high school player. We, we feel great about the, mm -hmm. you know, where those guys are going, but we wanted to bring in some experience. And so, you know, I think the transfer portals helped us in that regards because we've been able to address the needs. We, we referenced to the uh, wide receiver class last year. I mean, that built that room. And, you know, for the, some of the things that we had struggled um, to do in years past, we were able to, to show up and, and, and play big at that receiver position here this year. And, you know, it helped open the door for some of these freshmen that are now coming in. Well, I can tell you this much for any transfers that are out there, come to Transfer Rehab, where we <laughs> rehabilitate your career and it's up to you if you want to take it and go far. Well, and ultimately, it's still about finding the right fit. No question. And the that's right where, fit. you know, every young man, whether I, I don't care the path, everybody has their own story and their own journey, right? But it's about getting the right fit and the right young men that want to be a part of what we're building here at Florida State. And you look at, you can take a Jermaine Johnson, who was here for one year, but he will have a lasting legacy because of not only what he did on the field, but who he was in that locker room, what he did on the practice field. You know, I mean, he's making plays for the New York Jets and, and having a great start to a rookie year. But, you know, every time that he's had off, you know where he shows up. It's right back here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's because this is home. It's because of the relationships. Uh, you know, we've had great you know, high school players that have come in and started as true freshmen. We had, you know, Patrick Payton was ACC Rookie of the Year, uh, you know, defensively. But then you also being able to get guys that you know, might be a little bit older, have a little ex more experience, that are looking for that right situation. And we've been able to provide that as well. So, you know, I think we've had great balance in it and just, you know, so fired up about what this team's going to do and, and, and how we're going to continue to climb. Last question for you, Coach, in regards to the right fit. Tell us what a recruit, a prospect, a transfer-like player needs to have in regards to the character trait for you and your staff to say, this is a guy that can come help us build. Well, one, they have to love to work. Because you come here, we're going to work. We're going to work every, in everything that we do, whether it's you know, on the field, in the classroom, in the weight room. We are going to make that investment. 
But equally as important, the, the relationships have to matter, yeah. right? I want young men that come in here that care about who they play with. They care about the, the coaches. They care about, you know, the, you know, being able to, to make that deeper connection rather than just what they're doing on the field. I, I want them to, to truly have a passion for the people that they get to do it with because, you know, it, not every day is going to be a great day. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to have tr struggles. You're going to have times where, you know, it's, it, 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 the rain's coming down on you. But when you have somebody that's next to you that's going to pick you up, when you care about who you represent, when they care about playing for Florida State football, man, it, it is special. And so those relationships, are, are, those are critical. And then lastly, I want, them to be, I want them to be passionate, to be their best in everything that they do. And you see that within our team. Yes, you know, we, we were able to take some great steps this year, and we still have, we have an opportunity to go win our 10th game in this bowl game here in, in you know, nine days from now. But Right, what I love is that this is also a team that competed in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We're coming off a small fall semester. We just had a, the, the highest ever GPA in program history, right? <laughs> because we have a group of young men that are willing to compete. And, mm -hmm. and that's something that, that we look for. And all these guys that we're bringing in and our coaches have done a great job of evaluating that. And when they get on campus, uh, you know, we get to know their families. I mean, that's what, that's what you know, they're sold on because of the culture that we've established. Well said, Coach. Well, you'll be back with me a little later in the show. But Coach got everybody fired up about what we will see. So now let's tap into these prospects you guys will be cheering for that currently are committed to Florida State. So let's bring out next, we got Coach Atkins. And Coach Thompson talking about some of these outstanding offensive linemen and, of course, the tight ends that we will have be joining our class. Yeah, so uh, they told me, you know, this is a big time thing around here in these streets. So I felt like you, 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 I got to make sure my swag is together, you, you know. I'm a DB, but you know, I know y'all always got y'all always got room for an athletic boy on the offensive line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if y'all don't know about the significance of this jacket, you know, these guys went viral in the stadium on a recruiting trip. It was like two weeks ago, coach. About two weeks ago. Where well, they were sitting down in in the nighttime out there in Dope Campbell, had the light shining on them, and they, they sat on the bench, man. And it was just like, so I'm like, man, I need me one of them. Like I don't know if they're selling them just yet, but they will be out somewhere. And if you don't get any. I'm sorry, I got mine. But with that being said, it's only right when you talk about building a foundation, you gotta start in the trenches. You gotta start the guys who move people for a living and who don't mind doing so. And I think we have a solid foundation on both sides of the football. But you know, offensive guys, I'm sorry, Coach Odell, you like, they like to go first all the time. So let the offensive guys go first. We're gonna attack the offensive line right now. Man, a lot happened today. I think you guys are excited about some of the kids that will be coming here, along with some of the transfer tight ends as well. So let's start off, Coach Atkins, man. Let's hit on, man, Lucas Simmons. Let's, Lucas Simmons. Let's talk a little bit about Lucas Simmons and why he was a big-time fit for what you're doing here. Well, we saw Lucas earlier. <clears throat> he came to camp, and um, he really was just in a regular line. He wasn't even like you have these lines where you got the high-profile players, and he just came and he went to work. Long, athletic, smart, you know, he comes from Sweden, his family, his mom still lives in Sweden, and he's down there in Tampa at Clearwater uh, International Academy. But the thing about Lucas was, man, he, he took his five officials, he, he handled the recruiting process the way it's supposed to be handled. Mm -hmm. He took his five visits, he made his decision, and he never, I mean, he never even blinked. You know, he was always supportive, always there, so he done a really good job. But I think, you know, as far as NFL ability, ability and talent and upside, I mean, he, he scratches the ceiling. I mean, he, he has, he, the sky's the limit for him. Watching his highlights, I always saw him on the left side. Is he a true left tackle? He's a guy that can be flexible right or left? He is. I think he's that true left tackle. But I mean, you know, we don't, I, I like to have, you know, they, he, 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 he going to be able to play right too. Uh -huh. But I mean, I look at him as a guy that can lock down the left side for me and do a really good job. So explain, your coaching, hat is, your coaching hat is always on. So explain to our audience that might not understand the significance of playing the left tackle or the right tackle. Well, you know, normally your quarterback is right-handed. You know, you talk about what he can't see and things coming at him. And um, that left tackle is the guy that's responsible for covering the side. He can, you know, the movie blind side and things like that where he has to be able to protect. And also, you know, in protection, we try to – you got to have that tackle just like you, as a B and a DB. You got to have that, be able to say, okay, I can't worry about this side. He has to be able to lock this down so we can concentrate our protection and schemes and slides on other places. But we know we got a sure anchor at one side. We know we can lock on one-on-one. -on -one. So that comes with a lot of responsibility. Next up, a very, very athletic offensive lineman. Once again, Andre Otto. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Otto. 
So Otto was fun to recruit because I, I said that one day I was going to find me a recruit in Key West so I have a reason for Coach Novell to pay for me to go down there. <laughs> so, um, I finally found him, you know, and, and, and I was going to find one anyway. It was real nice down there. But I'll tell you about Otto, man, he, he, he's a football guy. He's a smart kid, recruited by Ivy League schools and went all the way out there to the West Coast. But the thing was, he emphasized this. He was a duality. He wanted to play on a big-time stage. And... You know, what I loved about him was they had a hurricane down there, and he sent me a picture. He was on a lawn chair with his feet up, and the water was touching his heel. And I said, man, are, are you sad about this? He said, the only thing I'm sad about is we're not practicing today. He said, we're not doing very good, and we need to practice as much as possible. So that lets you know everything about him, man. Ooh. You just want to talk about high upside, athletic ability. I mean, you know, I know when he came up for camp, coach saw him play. We had uh, kickball, and then coach, coach Novell grabbed me and said, I don't care what happened. We better get him, so. You, you ain't got sure, him. I'm making sure I wouldn't mess it up. So do you have another reason to go back down to Key West or you haven't found another recruit yet? We, we, I, I was trying when I was down there, uh -huh. and I, I think I got, you know, you got we, 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 get some shrimp down there. You know, yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So now with that being said, those were the prospects, high school prospects that we had the luxury of signing. Let's talk about some of the transfers. First up, Casey Roddock. Yeah, Casey's, uh, you know, um, experience. He's played a lot of football. He's played a lot of positions, too. What I love about Casey was when we sat down, we didn't talk about football. He was at Colorado, right? Colorado, yep. yep. And when I got up there, to, now I didn't, I didn't want to go up to Boulder. That's not where I wanted to go when I was out recruiting. But I flew up there and, and bought me a hat and because um, I didn't have any hats living down here. But I tell you what, he's experienced. He has played multiple positions, played a lot of football, his toughness. Everybody we talked to about him just kind of talked about his athletic, athletic ability to recover and just the kind of young man he is. I mean, when we sat down, we talked more about life and and just being the best version of yourself and, you know, his, his uh, family were uh, fans of Florida State, which that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of connections. Went to the, he was at the same high school with Lorenzo Booker and those guys. So there's a lot of... He was a Cali guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. A lot of connections out there. But, you know, what I love about him is he, all he talked about was, Coach, I saw you sign a lot of high school players last year because we brought a huge high school class in last year. And all he said was, I would love to help you pour into those guys. So mm. that was big time. Team player, we love it, we love it. Next up, we got Jeremiah Byers. Now, Jeremiah, <laughs> energy, energy, emotion, passion, you can see it in the picture. I mean, he came on his visit and uh, I mean, he just lit up the room, but he's the guy that played that right tackle position. Can, we're gonna make him versatile, we can play tackle or guard, mm -hmm. athletic, you know, a team we saw him play a lot of film on was actually against Oklahoma. Um, you know, they played that team and he did a good job of, 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 of you know, leveraging himself, anchoring, using his hands, striking and being physical. So staying on his feet, you don't see him on the ground a lot. So, you know, he can um, ability to recover. But, you know, I, I just I think, you know, when you talk about what you want in the room as far as energy, passion, coming to work every day, just yeah, I, 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 I was Coach Gary was telling me it's going to be hard to take his joy. You know, I try to take joy sometimes. Oh, really? It, and why, why is that? Tell us know, why. Well, because if you're not growing, it's hard for me to be polite you know uh -huh. like growth is the key to politeness if you're growing we're gonna be best friends but yeah. if you're not it's a little rough for you so I don't he's gonna be a challenge for me because I think no matter what I say he's just gonna smile at me and say I got you coach which probably gonna piss you off a little a bit li I'm already a little bit you know I already know it's coming <laughs> <laughs> last up Keandre Jones from Auburn right yeah I mean, I, that, that's gonna be that's the bodyguard you know he, six he, four three forty oh yeah he won't he won't look at it too flat stomach big hands I told him the other day, I'm, I'm not going to probably yell at him too much because at, when we watched him on film, we said whenever he got into a block, he never went backwards, mm. ever. So, you know, to have that big bodyguard in the middle when we play some of these bigger D tackles, and I tell you what, just humbleness, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like uh, Coach Fertitta and Coach Cooper did a good job. They, they pointed out someone to visit. He never walked through a door without his mama going in first. Mm. He never got in the car until his mom got in. Just the type of people to pour into those young guys I got. Because we got a lot of young guys that are going to be good players. Yeah. The early Sap, Julian Knight. We got a lot of good players in there. But just to have a guy that's been through it, see an example, and to kind of have somebody in the room you can go to and have comparative views, I mean, that, that, that it's, it's wonderful. Coach, last question before we transition to the tight ends and Coach Thompson. How many office alignment you got? Because I asked you last year, I said, well, dang, you trying to have the whole class be office alignment. What, what we doing? We never have enough, you know, so we well, still Well, how many hunting. you got? You got we 15? You I don't got... even, I don't, we, unlimited. You know what I mean? We don't keep a count. We're just trying to get as many as we can to make sure we're ready for whatever come. Now, Coach Thompson's he a little upset with me right now because he didn't get a jacket. You know, he didn't get a jacket. Yeah, Coach, you got to get one of these jackets, he's Coach. He's an O-line coach for, you know, long than I've been alive, ball yeah. coach, you know, was all around the country, was Coach, coach O-line, but... You know, he's kind of went to that skill position. Yeah, so he don't get a jacket. No, he ain't the same. Yeah. He so, hey, Colton, this is what I, I suggest. Skelly. Yeah. You create your own jacket, right? 
create. No, that I don't like how that one look. That no, we, that, that ain't, ain't, it. It ain't the same. It ain't that ain't it. Like this. We got you got to get a little. We got we got to update your swag catalog. Appreciate it. I think we can do that. But with that being said, Coach Thompson, one thing I love about Florida State here offensively, they utilize the tight ends. The tight ends is very, very special in being successful on the offensive end, especially in this new age stage of football where everybody want to just play tricky like football. When you got a tight end that can be extremely mean and catch the football like a little guy, you're going to do numbers. And that's what we saw this past year, and now we're starting to see a lot of other guys want to come be a part of what you're building here. So, Coach Thompson, man, you got two outstanding, experienced guys. First up, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Bell from South Carolina. Tell us about him. Yeah, so Jaheim. Uh, Jaheim, I'm sorry, yeah, Jaheim. Jaheim Bell, obviously a guy that has experience, you know, at the highest level. Uh, a guy who's very explosive uh, and very versatile. He's, uh, you know, they've, they've used him, South Carolina used him in a number of different ways in the slot. They used him attached. Right. They've used him out of the backfield. Uh, they've used him at running back. You know, he's, he's just a, a, a very dynamic player. And what stands out to me is just the intelligence. To be able to learn all those different things, you have to be a smart player. That's, that's not easy to do to put all that together uh, in, in any system. But he's a guy we're very excited about bringing into our system and, and the plays that we know he can make. Listen, when, when y'all got him, I was hyped. Because I remember the freaking Mayo Bowl against North Carolina yeah. where he just put up a highlight reel. If you don't know who, who Jaheim Bell is, go back and watch two years ago, South Carolina, North Carolina Mayo Bowl. That's all you need to know. He can be our version of Debo Samuel. Y'all know who Debo Samuel is, right? I hope y'all watch football, not just folks who watch football. He's a very, very versatile guy. As Coach mentioned, put him up anywhere in the football field, and he's going to do numbers. So he's going to do big-time things for us. And what about uh, Kyle Murlock? Yeah, Kyle's another guy that's, that's got a lot of versatility. Uh, he's a little bit longer player, a little taller, uh, can probably handle some of the inline stuff a little bit more, uh, but also very versatile, can go outside, can go in the slot, can do a lot of different things, and also a guy who's very intelligent. He was, a, I think, a 3'9 student as an engineering major. Oh, he major. really smart for real. Really smart dude. So oh. both those guys, uh, you know, they bring the athleticism you want and the length that you want and the size and all those things, but also – High character, high intelligence people that, you know, both come from exceptional families. And it's been fun getting to know those families throughout the process. How excited are you when you get these type of extreme gifted athletic guys into, your, into the building? I'm, I'm really, and it's, it's like Coach said, in, in the O-line room, there's a lot of good players already, and you're adding to that. Same thing in, in the tight end room. We have some, some guys returning that I'm very excited about. But these guys that, that we'll be able to add into the mix, you know, and the things that they can potentially do with, with what Coach Norvell, Coach Atkins will be able to scheme up. It's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're well, excited. And you're talking about scheme. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's a nice segue for me. Like, what should we expect to see? You got a 6'7", and you already had Johnny, who's 6'6". You got Jaheim. You got – y'all got some heat. So what, what, what should we expect to see? Well, and then you got Mark Easton. He's a 6'6 six, six guy that's yeah. 270 pounds. I mean, you – Football is a big man's game. Yeah. It, it, at the end of the day, it's it's you know there are some small guys that can be successful and and can make plays in football, but it's a it's really a game for big people. And you know you want to walk out in that stadium with big big individuals who you know we want to we want to hurt the other people. We don't want to get hurt. So no that's, question. That's why you want big people. And so we we we've, we've added a lot of athleticism, but a lot of length, and we're excited about that. Big men who can run like little men. When you that's find it. that, you're gonna win a lot of ball games. That's it. With that being said, man, thank you, Coach, Coach Atkins, and Coach Thompson, joining us here, highlighting the big fellas. Next up, let's go to the best position, which is the secondary. We got Coach, Coach Fuller and Coach Woodson joining us here to highlight the safeties and the cornerbacks. I said the best position, so y'all should be clapping. This, this is where we make money at right here. We got to talk about the guys in the back end. Coach, man, this was uh, another outstanding group of guys for this early signing day period. I know you guys are excited. Uh, let's highlight the safeties first. We got Quindarius Jones, safety, talented safety. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Jones. Yeah, I mean, we'll put Q down as a safety, but we really took him, you know, Wood did a great job of creating a relationship with him, but he came to one of our camps, and, you know, he's 6'1", 195 pounds, and we put him out there, and we lined him up at corner, mm -hmm. and he can play corner, and there's no question about it, and just his athleticism and what he can bring, you know, you look at his size, and you say, that's a safety, 
-hmm. But he's athletic enough to play corner. He could play nickel. You know, he's really, you know, the type of DBs we're looking for. We're looking for big, fast people. They're athletic and, um, you know, Q fits all those bills. And yeah. um, he's a special athlete. You know, he played in that um, – so he played in that Alabama Mississippi All Star game. Uh -huh. They put him at safety. I remember he called me. He said, "Coach, I don't know anything. I'm doing. I'm a corner." Uh -huh. And I said, "Well, just go out there and make some plays." Next day, he picked off three balls. He goes, "I think I got it figured out." In the All Star <laughs> game, he picked off three. It was practice. It was practice. Yeah. Practice. So, so, coach, you keep talking about corners. I know you love big guys that can play corners. Where do you see him fitting for your scheme? What you guys love to do? You know, I think we're going to bring him in. We're going to go through workouts. Um, you know, I think we'll probably end up starting him out at corner and see where it goes for him. Uh, but, you know, just as many good athletes that we can get that love playing football, and, and uh, we'll figure the rest out. Next up, K.J. Kirkland. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Kirkland. You know, K.J. was played at Reigns, Jacksonville boy, and, you know, he, you know, he's been to our place a number of times. And another guy that started out playing corner, mm -hmm. big, long, 6'2", long arms, comes from a track family. His sisters run track uh, here in state, Division One track runners. Okay. And so K.J., you know, long, athletic, played corner, played some wide out, uh, played some safety, you know, just, you know, again, one of those long, athletic guys that, you know, can probably play safety and corner, and just, again, another guy we're really excited about. Why is it important for you guys, scheme-wise, to have players that can be interchangeable? When you talk about both safeties or being able to play corner or safety. Well, I mean, you look at our offense, we got a basketball team out there. You, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, you just can't have small guys at every spot. You know, you, know, you got to be able to move and, and be athletic enough. But just the length to be able to challenge all the different types of offenses that you're playing. Um, and then, you know, just with formations nowadays, you know, if, if guys just play corner and that's all they're focused on, you know, next thing you know, they're in the slot. They got to know how to play nickel. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then when you get injuries, you just want to be able to put your best players out there. You know, you don't want to have backups that, you know, you just want to be able to have a deep room. And Wood's done a great job of developing that room and just having the flexibility to move guys around. No doubt, no doubt. And with speaking of Coach Wood, let's talk about the corners. You got two guys that you signed this early signing class. First up, Jabril Rawls. Uh, yeah, Jabril is a great kid. Uh, he was a kid that played both ways at his high school. He was the starting receiver as well as a corner as, and safety. Uh, and, you know, he's a kid that came to camp as well and did a phenomenal job. But one thing that I was able to do is go and watch him play. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that stood out was just his physicality. He's a kid that has to come in and get stronger, uh, put on some muscle mass so he can gain a little weight. But you know, his physicality and willingness to tackle was something that really stood out, and also his effort. You know, he was a kid that never came off the field, mm -hmm. but defensively, he was always around the ball, and that was one thing that stood out. So he's a kid that'll be able to come in, and he got phenomenal ball skills. He's a really fluid athlete as well, and uh, he fits the bill in terms of the athleticism that we look for. And he's rangy. You know, he's a kid that got lengthy arms, uh, he's right at about six foot. So that's the one thing we were able to address with this signing class is just some length in, on the back end. Mm -hmm. He looked pretty fast, too. Can he run? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I can tell you about when it comes to cornerbacks, I love when Florida State get corners from Broward County because I'm biased. I'm from Broward County. So if you come from Broward and you come up here, you better excel and ball out. Next up, we got Mr. Edwin, Edwin Joseph from Chaminade. Absolutely. The one word that comes to my mind about it when he's a winner, you know, he's a kid that had an undefeated season. They won a state championship coming from a football rich high school. And, you know, in order to win championships, you want winners in your program. Mm -hmm. And he was a kid that never came off the field as well, started both ways, was a starting receiver. You know, it's interesting because Coach Dugans and I, we, we went back and forth kind of going at it, what position he was going to play. Yeah, and, DB, uh, he playing corner coach. Absolutely, yeah, no doubt. Playing, <laughs> but uh, he's a really good kid coming from a two-parent home, high-character kid that's involved with the community. So, you know, he fits who we are and how we do things on the football field as well. So we're excited about Edwin. Yeah, I, I'm excited too. Like I said, he's from Hollywood, so I'm from Hollywood. He went up the street to Chaminade, but you got absolutely. you a good one, Coach. Perfect. Absolutely. I'm excited they, about it. They got some more coming up this year, too, so make sure y'all tap back in there and get the pipeline going. Absolutely. No, no doubt. They got some more going in there. But, Coach, thank you for joining us. Coach Full and Coach Woodson, give them a round of applause, please. All right, next up, we got Coach uh, Takars and Coach Shannon. 
Give them a round of applause. Yes, sir. This should be interesting right here. Yes, sir. So you don't necessarily see, you know, quarterback and linebacker talk kind of tying in, but we're going to see that today. And the reason why, because it's very, very significant. Number one, I love pancakes, right? And the unique thing about pancakes, you got to oftentimes will do what? You got to flip them. Flip them, right? And the reason why flipping pancakes is significant, it tastes better when you flip them. In regards to recruiting, flipping is just important. Because you basically taking a kid from another university that's trying to do the same thing to you. And first up, we got to highlight Mr. Brock Glenn. The unique, unique story about Mr. Glenn was he was Ohio State commit, right? And everybody thought he was going to Ohio State. Brock from Georgia, right, Coach? Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. Volunteers, you know, they thought he had a shot too. But Ohio State really thought they had the kid locked and loaded. But somehow or another, we flipped him like some pancakes. And he is now a no, baby. So with that being said, Coach, tell us a little bit about Mr. Brock Glenn. As you see, as these clips roll here a little bit, just from the physical side of it, he's a guy with a big arm, operates in the pocket really well right here, can extend, push the ball downfield. Um, he, he's a really good athlete. I mean, he's 6'2", about 200 pounds right now. Um, he's, he's a smart football player that, that does a good job taking care of the ball. You're going to see right here a little, little clip of him using his legs a little bit. Not quite number 13 right there, but, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, what, what, one of the things in all seriousness that sticks out to this clip to me is, is two intangibles that he has that were really one of the first things that stood out to me. And one is his toughness, and the second thing is his competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And I think those two traits at that position are critical to the success of not just individually at the position, but how the offense operates and how the team operates as a whole. So excited to have Brock on board. What made him a fit for what you guys do here? Tough, smart, cares about other people. Um, talked about his intelligence. He's a 3.8 kid in the classroom. Um, family is very, very important to him. And his recruitment in today's day and age was, was pretty unique. I mean, he's a guy that, that, that's from Memphis. We obviously have the ties with Coach Norvell, myself. Coach Johnson was over at Memphis with us. Coach Wood was at Memphis. Um, Cooper Williams, our offensive line graduate assistant, helped facilitate the relationship um, just with the school and the family and everything being a, a native of the city of Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, and then going back to our days there, the, it, it, it shows the importance of relationship. Okay. I mean, the, the Lausanne High School staff used to come by and hang out with us and, and we did a great job of just giving them access and, 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 and not just putting them in a film room and, and letting them go. We built real genuine relationship with that staff and I think that that carried over and helped with the, the recruitment of this kid. And, and ultimately, he was a great fit for us. No question. Yep. Brock looks the part, too. You know what I mean? You can tell even on the quad machine, guy got some quads like a horse. That's a great, that's a great <laughs> trait. On, on that same note, just yeah. something with Brock. I mean, um, you, you're talking about a kid that works out with the offensive line. And it wasn't because yeah. of his strength or that he was one of the stronger, more physically gifted kids on the team. It was because he believed in the importance of gaining the trust of the guys that were going to be in front of him. I so I think that. that says a lot about him. No question. I love that. I love that. So let's transition now to the linebacks. We got Coach Shannon also up here with us. Coach Shannon, the first player, before we start the highlight, before we start the highlight, the first player we're going to talk about, Coach, is DeMarco Ward. Now, the significance with Mr. Ward is that he's already here. Can you stand up for us? Yeah, he's already here. So. Now, why that is very, very special. This kid just graduated. Well, you graduated Friday? This last Friday he graduated. Instead of just enjoying his time as a high school graduate and his friends, he decided to get up to the Tallahassee put in some work. That's special. A lot of kids that are 17, 18 years old, they're not doing that. They're going to enjoy their Christmas break. They're going to get ready to party for the last time until they go off to school. DeMarco said, nah, screw all that. It's time to get to work, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So with that being said, Coach Shannon, tell us what's special about, and you don't have to be nice because he's in the building. Let's just be real. I'm being honest. Yes, be honest. What's special about DeMarco Ward? Well, DeMarco's a young man that we watched on film, very athletic, makes a lot of plays, but he's a two-sport guy. Mm -hmm. and all the great players that usually come and play college football are two-sport guys. He's run track. He's run the hurdles. As you see on film, he's going to be a very aggressive young man, make a lot of tackles for loss, but create negative plays. He's very versatile. They can play outside. He can play inside. He can cover tight ends. He can cover running backs. He can come off the edge. 
He does a lot of good things for his team, and that's what we've seen on film. As a matter of fact, I think Coach Atkins, this is his school, that he was talking about the young man, and we came back, and when I went down there this spring, he also watched him in the spring verify what was going on, and it's like a, a unit for us. Mm -hmm. Even though he's a linebacker, Coach Atkins actually went and watched him a second time in the spring to verify, like, this guy's a real guy. Yeah. And when an offensive coach says that, that means a lot. No question. That means that's a no-brainer take because that if the offensive guy says that's a real guy, you take that guy. No question. Because he that scares be you. With that being said, when you look at what you're looking for in regards to linebackers, what's that one character trait they need to have for you to say, yeah, he can play for me? Well, we look for very smart, athletic guys, guys who can, who can do a versatile things. You know, you can't this time and age because of the spread offense, you can't line up and just say we're going to play a middle linebacker. DeMarco is the type of guy that we're looking for that can play outside, inside, can cover a tight end. Sometimes he may get matched up with a receiver. And sometimes those things happen, but you got to be able to hold up, and he's got that athletic ability to do those type of things. Okay, all right, love it. All right, DeMarco, yeah, you here. You already here. They got you now, you can't leave. <laughs> you got you. All right, next up, another linebacker coming from the West Coast, Blake Nicholson. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about Mr. Blake. Blake Nicholson from uh, Manteca, matter of fact, D-Ray from Manteca also. He's in, uh, in charge of uh, operations. There goes D-Ray, D-Ray, say hi. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Well, Blake is a young man that plays multiple positions. You're going to see him line up at free safety, free safety, corner, running back, receiver, quarterback. He does it all for his team. He's never off the field, do punt returns, kickoff returns. And this athletic ability, just like DeMarco, as you see him making a catch right here on his long pass, he's very versatile and he's a guy that can do a lot for the football team. But just his athletic ability, the toughness that he has in him, to make plays and just to go out there and play each and every day is unbelievable. He's also going to play in the All-American game in, in San Antonio mm -hmm. coming up, and he can represent Florida State. As you see him running, very fast, very athletic, and loves to compete. One thing that uh, this summer I was talking to him about working out, and he said, well, Coach, I'm going to go over here to Vegas. I said, what you going to Vegas for? You know, work out close. He said, no, I got something to prove. I said, what you got to prove? But well, I don't think I'm very good. I said, why do you say that? Well, you know what? I told him I was coming. They told me don't come. I said, okay, put me against the best guy. He went against their best guy. He shut everybody down. Wow. That's the type of guy we're getting at Florida State, a guy that loves to compete and loves to prove to everybody that he's the guy to be the leader of this team. So, Coach Shannon, question for you. What happens when he's finally here and just seeing the versatility that he has? You said he played corner, he played safety, he played running back, played wide receiver. What happens when y'all coaches get together and y'all see him like, hey, no, I think he should be over here. No, I think he should be here. Because you already know Coach Fuller and Coach Wood probably going to try to sneak him in the secondary because they love big guys who can run. Well, he does play in the secondary. Yeah. When he flex a tight end out, he will cover a tight end. That's secondary. That, that kind of sort of, but he still got the LB next to his name. Still, still, it's part of the secondary. Long story short, he's staying in your room. He's staying in my room. All right, Coach, well, yeah, he's staying in the room. No question, no question. Let's give Coach uh, Takaraz and Coach Shannon a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, next up, we're going to transition right back to the offensive side. You know, guys that put points on the scoreboard. We got Coach Johnson and Coach Ron Dugas coming up right now. Give them a round of applause, please. I got a little hot. Yeah, I, I got a little hot. Yes, sir. All right, now this should be an interesting conversation because both of these coaches, their room is loaded. They got bodies after bodies. It's going to be real interesting to see how this thing play out. Talent, every day is going to be a dog fight in their room. If you want to play out there, you better, every day is a game day. So with that being said, let's start with the wide receivers first and foremost. Coach Dugans, man, you brought in some real high level character kids that can ball on and off the football field. First up, five star wide receiver coming from Broward County. Y'all know we got a lot of talent down there in Broward County. A lot of talent. Stranahan, I used to do a number on Stranahan back in the day, matter of fact. Hakeem Williams, five-star wide receiver, one of the best in the country, was an early commit and stayed loyal to the cause. Tell us a bit about Mr. Hakeem. One thing about Hakeem, uh, first of all, I started when he committed. I, I figured he'd stay committed because going into his senior year mm -hmm. uh, at Stranahan, a lot of people wanted him to come to their school, you know, and he stayed loyal to Stranahan. You know, so I felt like he would stay loyal. If he stayed loyal to Stranahan, he would stay loyal to us, mm -hmm. you know, as well. And that's what the young man did. Uh, he's a two-sport athlete, really good uh, basketball player as yeah, well. He can, he can hoop for you know, real. Got a chance yeah. to see him on the football field. And the biggest thing with him, we, we were recruiting him when he didn't have any stars. 
You know, so it wasn't just about the stars, it was about the young man and how he carried himself. His nickname is the Humble Beast. Mm. You know, he gets the ball in his hands. You know, he'll surprise you with his speed. You know, his short area quicks. Yeah. You know, what he can do with the ball in his hands. Uh, but really good football player and a great young man off the field. Yeah, next, and next up, matter of fact, yeah, Hakeem is a guy, when you see him, he looks the part. You know how some guys walk off the bus, he's like, oh yeah, he gotta play ball. He's one of them type kids. When he walk off, he's like, yeah, he gotta play football, nothing else. He was born to play football. That's what you say about me too, but you know, <laughs> in my dreams, you know, I was always a little guy. Next up, we got Van, Van, Van Drevius. Did I say that right? Van Drevius. Van Drevius Jacobs from Vero. Vero Beach. Now, I saw his highlights. Now, this, now, this guy can really go. He can move, uh, like, he nice. So tell us about Mr. Jacobs. First of all, he's from my wife's hometown. Oh, so you biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, but anyway, um, Van Dravis is a really good kid. Um, Two-way two player, you know, plays defense as well. I know Coach Wood was trying to steal him from us, you know. Um, but the biggest thing about the kid, we saw him in the 7-on-7 seven -seven contest uh, this past summer, mm -hmm. all right? He was cramping already, all right? On the sideline, the quarterback threw a, a fade. He had two guys on him, and he caught the ball laying sideways. All right, so Coach Novell looked at me, and I looked the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but that told me, like, the toughness of the kid, that he can play here at Florida State. Man, he, he's special. And I, I love the difference in, in athletic qualities in the guys you brought in. Because you got a bigger guy, Hakeem. You got Mr. Jacobs, who's more of a joystick type kid who can take a yard at any time. He also has that dog in him. Why that's important? Because every now and then you're going to get in situations on the football field where you got to really show people I ain't really no punk out here. You know, some guys are not like that. He got that in him. So I'd rather say woe than sick him. That's what Coach Andrews tell us at Florida State. <laughs> Give me a guy who I got to, mm-mm. I don't have to tell you to sick somebody. I got to tell you to calm down. He's one of those kids. Next up, we got Goldie Lawrence. Goldie. Goldie. Another one that we saw in uh, 707, Coach Novell. Uh, another one I turned my head away from as uh -huh. well. Um, but every time you saw him, in the summer, it actually came two summers ago. Mm -hmm. All right, and every time you saw him, all he did was catch touchdowns. You know, so it's like, man, like coaches, like go get Dugans. You know, where is he? So I go over there, and every time you see him, he just he catch touchdowns. I went to go see him in the spring. The first three plays of the game, he got the ball, touchdown. Three touchdowns. Oh yeah, he ended up with five. Oh. You know, but a really good kid, good football player, tough football player, explosive with the ball in his hands. You know, and I, I feel like he's a great competitor, right, willing to block on the perimeter. But mm -hmm. I feel like we're getting a really good football player. So, Coach, how is this all going to work out for you being a coach and all the receivers that you had last year that we were still cheering for coming back? And then you had these three talented studs as well. How that going to work out? Like, Well, I'll just say this. Snoop Menace, Laverne Coles, Anquan Bowden, yeah. Andre Cooper, E.G. Green, the yeah. list goes on. Yeah. That creates competition. No question. All right, and we all stayed put. And we waited our turn, and we competed. And y'all got to Sunday football, too, didn't you? Yeah, we did. All of y'all did. All of us. Yes, sir. Iron sharpens iron. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Iron sharpens iron. I love it. If you don't want to compete, go someplace else. If you want to compete and be the best you can be, you already know you need to go. And with that being said, you think his room is loaded. <laughs> that running back room. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There'll be some heat in that room, boy. Coach, Coach Yak is what everybody call him, Coach Yak. Samuel Singleton. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Singleton. Uh, extremely explosive. Um, the one thing you know about him is really quiet kid, mm -hmm. but you see him on that track. You're talking about 10 5, 10 6. He can run. He acts like 180 pounds, uh, but he is tough. I went to go see him play in person. That's what surprised me more than anything. You could see how explosive he is on film and on tape, but I didn't know he could run through tackles like that, and mm -hmm. he never shows any emotion. That's one thing about him. He's strictly business. He about football, and that's one of the main reasons, you know, I wanted him in the room. Wow. And we're, when you look at what he brings to the table, first thing I see in regards to similarities is Ward. They kind of like the same back when you talk about measurables and their running style? No, he's a little bigger than Ward. Okay. I would kind of compare him between Ward and LT. Uh, and the one thing about, you know, when we offered this kid, he came down, he got a chance to talk with us. He was like, Coach, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have to explain to him. He never asked, you know, who was in the room. He saw the tape. But anybody can be accepting to come in my room and mm -hmm. understand what they're facing. That's the kind of guys you want. So he, like wasn't, he say, didn't concern nothing about the depth chart. He's like, I'm He I'm wasn't on. worried about that. Say, Coach, just listen, I'm on my way. I'm coming. 
So those are the guys you want. You want guys like Coach said already. You want kids to come in who are going to work. They're not going to be given anything, and he accepted the challenge. When you get a kid to accept the challenge to come in the room that we have right now, that Coach Norvell, Coach Atkins got a chance to build with the offensive line, the offensive scheme, that's what you want, man. You, 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 want, you want ballers. So how are you going to handle this pressure you got with all that talent in your room? I think the biggest thing for me, uh, I already know, is not my cone drills. Uh, so my thing is, <laughs> don't mess it up. Yeah. You put those guys up that make sure they're protecting the ball, doing the things they need to do. And uh, I told Rodney Hill he's responsible for Sam. That's a culture we built. So when he yeah. comes in, he'll be ready to help him out, do the things he needs to do, but also understand that they're all challenging each other, you know, to play. And okay. we play a multiple a number of backs, so that's real good. Oh, yeah, we, we know that. Y'all going to play backs. You, if you're good enough, <laughs> you're going to get a shot. So if you ain't good enough, you ain't going to play. That's, that's what we do know about this <laughs> offense. But, man, this is going to be a talented, talented offensive backfield and wide receiver unit. Man, give it up for Coach Johnson and Coach Dugues. <laughs> talking about the wide receivers and the running backs. Next up, we got Coach Higgins and Coach P Pachuchas. Give it up, give it up. Now we got to go ahead and finish off on the defensive side, Coach. What's up, people? What's up, baby? Y'all good? Hey, hey, so I got a question. Since the offensive line guys got a jacket, can y'all get a jacket? We don't need that. Oh, y'all don't want no jacket. Okay. Right. Coach Odell said they don't need no jacket. So See, I got a sweater. That's <laughs> right. Match it. Match your sweater. Okay. Y'all don't care nothing about the glitz and glamour, huh? We were kind of grimy down there in the front. Yeah, the no question. Line. That's how it's supposed That's to be. That's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. But if y'all do get a jacket, I'd take one. But if, yeah, you know, I don't want a sweater. I got one of no more. Really. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm in a jacket. But a talented, talented uh, group of guys you guys were able to bring in. Uh, let's start with uh, the defensive tackles, first and foremost. Uh, first up, K.J. Sampson. Well, yes, K.J. from uh, New Burns, North Carolina. His kid's 6'3", he's about 285 now. I tell you what, this, this kid is a great kid. Mm -hmm. I tell you, very good student, the leader of a team that went 16 and 0, had to play five games to get to the state championship and win it. Wow. In North Carolina Stadium, mm -hmm. I must say. But KJ, he's very athletic. He's strong and big smooth. They talking about they got all the athletes. We got big athletes up front, my brother. <laughs> so y'all stop saying all that, yak, doogies. <laughs> yeah. But but he he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. He's what you want. That's the culture you keep building guys like that. He's physical, fast, play a little tight end, catch touchdown, things like that. KJ is an awesome kid. And you talk about the culture, coach, coach. You've been around here for a long, long time. You know, you helped yes. recruit me when I came here. Yes. And you've been a part of the defensive line since the beginning. So you know what it means when you talk about culture. What are you looking for in regards to interior guys that fit what you want to do? First of all, I'm looking for a heart. Mm -hmm. You can get some guys out there about 6'4", 290 pounds. If they don't have a heart, they can't play here for me and JP. Mm -hmm. They can't do that. Second, you want length, you want toughness. Toughness. And, and a lot of people don't understand what toughness is. You got to have mental toughness too mm -hmm. to play that. Because you look at Coach Atkins right there, you got two guys sitting right there in front of you. You got 640 pounds. You got you weighing 290 pounds. That's mental toughness. Yeah. And you got physically too. So you got to have a heart, man. And also you got to have the measurables. Because what Coach Jackson's bringing in, he's bringing a guy here about six, six foot tall, 280. Man, he's going to swallow him up, eat him up, yeah. engulf him. Yeah, no question. Next up, you talk about a guy in regards to having size and toughness. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Daryl Jackson, a transfer, by the way. Yes, Daryl Jackson uh, from uh, Gaston County, Coach Court, full of coaching. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I tell you this, man, this, this is a big grown man. He's 6'6", 315 pounds. This guy can push the pocket. He can run. He's a big athlete, a tough kid. He's a tough kid, a kid that, you know, we get him in here, and, it, and the kid want to work hard. Mm -hmm. He said, Coach, I want to be pushed hard. I said, you better believe you're going to be pushed hard in every aspect of your game, brother. How, in regards to being comfortable, how does it make you feel knowing that you talked about Corey Fuller, who's on the staff, Florida State legend, by the way, knowing that he's familiar with this kid and this is a kid that you will be coaching? How comfortable does that make you knowing that, you know, Fuller has already been around this kid and know who he is on and off the football field? It's very comfortable because I know what kind of coach Corey Fuller is. Mm -hmm. He's going to get out there because also he look after the kids. Yeah. And that's, that's important. They love him. 
The kids like that love it. No doubt. Yeah. And, and I can tell you this much, too, outside of just adding another unique transfer to our team, we took him from Miami. They didn't have much anyway. Defense, they ain't really had too much going on. But the last little bit that they had going on, we go ahead and went and snatched that up anyway. So that's, that's another big time plus. But shout out to Corey Boucher, man, for making that happen as well. And we're going to keep this truck rolling. So JP, man, let's talk about the edge rushers, guys who get paid to sack people, Pro professional sackers is what I call them. We got us a legacy kid, Lamont Green Jr., uh, joining us, coming all the way from Dade County. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Lamont Green. Yeah, no, so I'm so excited. He goes nicknamed Boots, so that, that's what we call him. But, um, you know, the, very early on uh, when we got here as a staff, we had an opportunity to meet him and, and meet Lamont mm -hmm. at an event that we were doing for recruiting in, uh, in uh, Miami there. And, you know, to watch him grow and develop in the last couple of years, I, I'm so excited about him getting here. He bleeds garnet and gold. Uh, he's tremendously talented. He's got a great first step. Uh, he does a great job bending off the edge, and he's productive. Um, you know, no matter who they played against, and they play a tough schedule down there. Mm -hmm. um, he he would come out of games. I had three sacks, coach. I had four sacks. I mean, he's just a super productive kid. Um, he he has a huge heart for Florida State, and and those are the kind of guys that you want in your program. Yeah, his first step is prolific. The reason why tell us why that first step has to be outstanding in regards to being an edge rusher? Well, you know, first of all, it, you only have a couple seconds to get there. So, you know, your initial get offs is so critical. But the one advantage that an offensive lineman has is size on you, mm -hmm. typically. So you want to be able to use your speed and be able to get that first step in the ground and be able to turn that corner to, to rush the passer is super critical. And, uh, you know, Boots a absolutely has that skill set. Boots reminds me of Brian Burns. You guys remember Brian, right? Plays for Carolina. And remember how he used to get off, bend that corner, call him a little Spider-Man because he gets low to the ground, low center of gravity. He reminds me a lot of Brian Burns with his first step. So hopefully we see the same production that we received from Brian with Mr. Boost. But that's up to you. You got to coach him up, yeah, coach. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him going. Yeah, so. you got to yeah. coach him up. Next up, we got Jaden Jones. Yeah, so Jaden's an interesting story. So uh, Jaden actually, Coach Tokars, uh, was up at his junior college going to see actually a different player. Mm. And he came back, he said, guys, we got to take a look at this guy. And, uh, you know, he we watched mostly practice tape initially because he hadn't played a lot. Mm -hmm. And super impressed with his length, his athleticism, um, what we thought he was going to develop into because he really hasn't even scratched the surface of, of who he was going to be. Um, he had a great spring, spring season, had a good fall camp. And then unfortunately for him, he got hurt early in the season. And, uh, you know, that was something I know that, that was disappointing to him that he didn't get to play this past year. Um, but, you know, I, everything always has, has a silver lining to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's two parts of the injury that I think are going to end up benefiting him in the long run. Number one was um, it gave us an opportunity during the recruiting process to be able to go through a little bit of adversity with him. I think the reason why he is so committed and so um, loyal to Florida State is we never waver, not mm. for one second. Um, that, that we were going to stay with him. And I think that that's really endeared us to him in terms of the loyalty factor. And two, I think he's now got that extra chip on his shoulder. Um, you know, every, every week, every day, I talk to him about his rehab process. Um, he's grinding and, and working. And I think with his skill set, his, athlet, his athleticism, and the fact that now he does have that chip on his shoulder, even, even larger than maybe it was in the first place, I think you're going to have an angry man uh, uh, coming into fall camp when he's ready to roll. Where is he in regards to health? How soon do you guys think he'll be 100%? Uh, 100%, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay away from percentaging it yep. because from, I don't, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But I do know he'll be able to work out with us when he gets here in the spring. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of contact, I think that's going to be closer to when we get to fall camp. Uh, probably won't do that in the spring. But he, everything, you know, we, we did the thorough evaluation. Everything looks good, and I think he's going to be ready to roll. Last question for both of you coaches. How – fun will it be when you get all these new guys into the building, especially with what you already have, going against Coach Atkins and Coach Sampson? Well, you know, I, I mean, it's, it, we have great competition in practice, and mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that's grown over the last couple of years. And, and one of the things I've really liked that's changed in college football recently is that almost all your guys come in mid-year. And you have that spring, <clears throat> that spring time where the foundation of the next year's team really gets laid through the off-season workouts that happen in, in January and February, and then the spring ball that happens um, and you could really start to build that team in gel. And I think that's why we were so much further ahead uh, from a defensive standpoint, from a special team standpoint, and I'm sure from an offensive standpoint, because we had almost all of our kids here uh, that we're playing with now showed up in, in 
January of last year. Yeah. And I think that's super critical to the development of your program. No doubt, no doubt. Well, give, it a, give these coaches a round of applause also. <laughs> Coach Higgins and Coach JP highlighting the defense alignment. Before we get up out of here, we'd like to bring up Coach Novell one more time, tap into his thoughts, getting ready for this bowl game, and what should we look forward to with the final recruiting class. I can tell you this much, Coach. Man, you got a lot of talent. Ooh, the expectations are gonna be high this year. Ooh, they gonna be mad. One thing I know about Florida State football, I noticed this when I was a player when I got to the league. There's only two type of people in regards to Florida State. Either you hate us or you love us. The people that usually hate us is that they were a part of what we were building. That's why we get so much hate and so much, it's so critical. But who cares? Because if you're not winning and doing good things, nobody hate on you. So it's a great thing when people hate on you. It happens. It happens a lot in sports. <laughs> so they, they're coming. You know they're coming. It's starting so. to feel a little bit more of that hate coming in it. No <laughs> question. No question. Especially how we kick down the doors when people in Gainesville down in Coral Gables. They still mad at y'all with 45-3 and whatever just happened at Dope Campbell. But we're going to keep that rolling. So, Coach, all this talent that you've been bringing in here, your coaches are fired up. I know you guys are excited. But before you talk about the talent, tell us a little bit about what should we expect to see in, the, what, nine days from now in the Cheez-It Bowl when we, got on, we take on the Oklahoma Sooners. The best of Florida State football. That's, that's what I'm excited about. You know, in our football team, you know, so proud of what they've done throughout the course of the season, how they've grown, how they responded. I mean, this team is, I mean, coming off, you try to give them a little bit of time right when, right when finals ended, you know, coming into bowl practice, and all they've done is, is attacked each day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, that is the objective. Can we, can we show up every day and fight the fight to be better than our best? That is the mission. Mm -hmm. And these guys, that they embrace that opportunity. Um, we had a great practice this morning. You know, we, got, we obviously got some more work to do before we go down to Orlando. But, I mean, we want to go play our best ball this season because how you finish, that's what people are going to remember. Okay. You know, we won the last five, you know, playing as good as anybody in the country, in my opinion. And now we get an opportunity to one more time with this team, this group. It is, uh, it's a special team. You know, uh, I tell them, you know, you, you, yes, we did what we needed to do in, in winning, you know, you know, winning the state championship. We we're two and zero against the SEC, mm -hmm. right? You know, the, the West Division champs. So we, we did what we we're supposed to do there. Now you get an opportunity to go get your tenth win, right? When you walk down the hallway there in, in, in the, the Moore Center, you know, there's, a, there's, I think, 24 10 win seasons. Mm. You get a chance to change that number to 25, that now you're a team that gets to be remembered, no right? And I love what these guys have done and the, in, in the investment, the commitments they made. I mean, it is, it, it is a special group, and I want to enjoy every moment that we get with them, but I want to see them continue to, to push, continue to get better, and we got a great, great opportunity and a great showcase uh, there in the Cheez-It Bowl here in Orlando on the 29th. No question, and for you guys that are attending the game, make sure you're there. For some of you guys that are not going, you should go support coaches, support the players. You talked about the significance of having 10 wins, but how important is it to win this bowl game to ride off into the off season, get, get guys fired up about what's going to happen in 2023? Well, they're going to be fired up because we know what's coming, mm. right? But I, if, what I want to see is I want to see them go continue to take the steps, right? We have great momentum within our program, and you know, with each chance you get, a ch you get to go out there and to showcase who you are, the identity. You know, we talk about that finish. We want to be a team that plays smart. We want to be a team that, that plays, uh, plays fast. Mm -hmm. We want to play, uh, be a team that plays physical. But we dang sure want to be a team that finishes. And that's, where, that's what the opportunity is that, that's ahead. And to be able to do it against a, a great brand, an explosive team in Oklahoma, I mean, we know it's going to be a challenge. right? But it's not about them. It's about us. Mm -hmm. It's about what we do in the, in the legacy that we get to leave right, for, the, for this uh, you know, 2022 Florida State football team. And I'm, like I said, I'm proud of our guys. I'm proud of what they've done. You know, it, you know, offensively, defensively, yes, we're celebrating uh, some great stars that are coming into this program. But like I said earlier, you, you sit there and you, you, look at, you, you look at recruiting, right? It's what shows up on the field. No question. Right? And when you look at our football team, we are the only team, we, the only team in the United States of America Right, that was top 10 in yards per play on offense and top 10 in yards per play on defense. Right, that is when playmakers show up. And, and that's, what these, that's what these young men have done. And I'm just so proud of them. I want them to be able to go finish the season the way they deserve to finish it with all the hard work and investment that, they, that they've made. Last question for you before we let you go, Coach. We talked about the guys that currently have committed, have signed their letter of intent. Of course, there is a final signing day that happens in February. When you guys come together as a staff, are there certain 
areas you would like to hit on in regards to the final signing day period? Well, there's a couple more positions that that, that we're gonna that we're gonna continue to recruit. You know, obviously it's, it is a new age in, in college athletics. You have the second signing date. We also have the potential of of, uh, of other transfers that you have until school starts to, to make that decision. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's no rest for the weary. We're gonna continue to continue to work. We'll be we'll be recruiting all the way till uh, uh, till we start up in in January. We'll have a, you know a few more additions, and then we'll see where we're at come the second signing. Day uh, with the open opportunities and uh, you know, guys that we would want to bring in, but you know it's it's like I said earlier, finding those finding those playmakers that can come in uh, and be able to, to make that impact. You know, when you look in the defensive secondary, you know there's still some guys that have some decisions on what they're going to do for this next year, but mm -hmm. uh, you know I think there's a, a, a great potential for to, to to add maybe you know one or two other guys there, you know to, to go with the the wonderful signings that we were able to have today. So you know, we'll continue to evaluate all of it and uh, you know just make sure we're bringing in the right fit. No doubt. Well, Coach Novell, thank you for joining us. Thank you, all the coaches, you know, a part of this staff. They've been working hard 24-7. One thing about coaching, y'all don't stop. Y'all don't stop at all. Man, you got to love it. You got you to be dedicated because they wow. put in a lot of time, and hopefully you guys appreciate everything these coaches do, man, because they have families, but it's all about football. Well, and I want to say this to, to all our, 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 our Seminole family. We're so grateful for you, right? The energy, right? The passion. You know, we felt that this year. No question. You see, you, see, you see a team that's taking those positive steps. We talk about our climb. And, I, and I'm telling you, we are very, very close. And this team is committed to, to continuing to push forward. But I appreciate you. I appreciate the support. I pre appreciate all that you do. You know, to, to the coaches, to, to all the support staff, you don't, you don't understand how hard these guys work. Because anybody can go sign a jersey number. Right? We're not looking just to sign a jersey number. We're trying to sign the right right young men they're going to come take this program back to where it deserves to, to be and that's the top of all college football and that's where we're headed so thank you so much for the Seminole family we're grateful for the opportunity and we're going to we're going to put together and continue to build a team that's going to represent you the right way go Knowles go Knowles